Stuart. Premier and Mr Guy, um, thank you for your time. Um, I've got the privilege through work to travel th to all the capital cities around the country. And it's clear from being in the capitals that Melbourne's recovery is the slowest of any capital in this, in the, in this country. And that's proven by 45% uh, occupancy rates in Melbourne. Given that we've had the longest lockdown, given that we are the slowest recovering, what, uh, and it's a question for both of you, what are you going to do to get Melbourne CBD back to where it should be, which is a thriving city, better than all the other capitals, and do we start by getting public servants back to work? Thanks, Stuart. Start with Mr Guy. Look, I, I, I want to encourage people to come back to work. I, I want to encourage people to, to be in the CBD again. It's why we've got a CBD revival package. But more importantly, it's why I've committed to have $2 flat fare public transport right across built-up areas and the Melbourne metropolitan area. So well, what is that? It, it's an incentive. It's not a disincentive and forcing people back. It's saying to people, here's a financial reason to come back to work. You don't have to pay that parking. Two dollars all day, every day, flat fare, public transport, from Pakenham, from Werribee, from Mernda, or from within the CBD area. It encourages people back to the city to be tourists in their own city, like my, my wife and I are with our kids, like hopefully people do for work. But we must get people back. We must encourage them back to the city, not penalise them, encourage them. That's what our CBD revival strategy does. It's about cleaning up the, the streets in the city, working with the council to do so, getting people on an affordable public transport initiative to come back to the city. But you're right, because I've travelled like you have around the city, around the country rather, and Melbourne is the slowest to recover. But that comes back to where I started. We've got to be positive about our city. We've got to talk our city up. And Melbourne can be that vibrant place that it's been in the past. And I think that comes down to some initiatives in which we've put forward to everyone. I think you probably travel to more capital cities than I do. <laughs> and I'm not, I don't want to have an argument with you, but our bars are full, our restaurants are full, getting our hotel rooms really hard. Uh, we've uh, had the biggest Grand Prix in the history of the sport earlier this year. We've just finished the T20 World Cup and broken all sorts of records. We've got Billy Joel coming here, sold out in minutes and half that crowd are not from Victoria. There's a lot happening. Is there a lot more to do? Of course there is. Matthew talked about penalising. No one's penalising anybody, but patterns of movement have changed. Uh, there was a survey recently that if you forced people to go back to work, half of them would look for a new job. Things have changed. But just as there might be some challenges in parts of the economy in the CBD, our suburbs, our suburban CBDs, if you like, they're going very, very strongly. Our regional cities are thriving. We've got a 3.6% unemployment rate and a growth rate across our state that is well above the national average. So there's a lot to be positive there, a lot to be positive about. But major events and making sure we've got the best quality offering, I think that's a really important part of it. On public transport, Matthew and I have got a different view. When I talk to public transport users, they tell me they want better services. They want more trains more often. They want upgrades and improvements. Uh, that's, what, that's been our focus, getting rid of those level crossings, upgrading tracks, signalling, building new stations and building new trains. And I can't tell you how proud we are to know that those trains are built by Victorian workers for Victorian passengers. There's more work to do here. I think we probably share the same aim. We may have different ways to get there. But I want to see our city as busy as possible. But it's going to be the biggest city in our nation very soon. And that's why things like the suburban rail loop, it's not a choice between health and public transport. You've got to do both. And we've got a plan to do both and indeed do more than that. Because government's not about one or two things we wish it were. It's about many more things than that. And you've got to have priorities across the board and work really hard to deliver in each and every one of them. Premier, what, what do you say that to the critique on the suburban rail loop that it it's a risk because it hasn't gone to Infrastructure Australia. It's a massive expenditure. What's your well, response? And, and, and also, sure. in, I guess, in response to the opposition leader saying, is it really the priority when at Box Hill Hospital you've got upwards of 400 people staying in the emergency department for more than a day at a time? Well, you, you have to do both, Kieran. You've got to invest in the very best public transport network. Otherwise, very soon, you cancel the suburban rail loop, you're kind of cancelling the suburbs as we know it. Uh, you've got to get hundreds of thousands of cars off the road, and that's what the best public transport does. Now, 
we've started this project. We know that we won't be around in the middle of next decade to open it. But if you don't do it now, someone else will have to do it and it will cost more, much more than what it costs now. It's not about whether you can afford to do it, it's whether you can afford not to. Similarly, though, we're out there recruiting additional nurses, additional AMBOs. Every health system in this country... I talked to Dominic Perrottet, I talked to other premiers and first ministers. Every other health system in this country has struggled because our staff are tired. We've had record numbers of patients and we've also had record numbers of staff who've been at home sick because they're, they're pretty special people, but they get sick too. We're seeing some stabilisation with that and indeed some improvement. I'll just say this, we had the very best ambulance response times in the history of our state. That's what our paramedics delivered just weeks before COVID hit. And we are determined, and I know they are, because I sit and listen to them and, and they've helped us to write our policy and our plan. We and our paramedics are absolutely committed to getting back to that performance. You've got to do more than one thing. That's why working hard and never wasting a day is so, so important.